Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at arrays in JavaScript and Node.js, continuing my course on Node.js and JavaScript for complete beginners. So in the last video, we took a look at for loops, and now we're going to look at arrays. So let's create a new file here in Visual Studio Code, and I'll call it arrays.js. And as usual, I'm going to write use strict at the top. So um, an array is a list of items. It's a, you can think of it like a numbered list of items. So um, let's, let's create a variable. I'm going to call this days and I'm going to set it equal to. And now we've, we've seen variables uh, that have, that are of the type text. So I could write, you know, days equals hello or whatever. And we've seen numerical variables like 7.3. Um, but I can actually set a single variable equal to a whole list of things. And the way we do that is, well, there are various ways to do this in JavaScript. But uh, again, here, I'm going to concentrate uh, in this first part of the course on stuff that is similar to what you get in other programming languages. And that is also very common in JavaScript, just concentrating on simplest ways of doing things and fundamental building blocks. So we write two square brackets here and then the usual semicolon. And in these two square brackets, I can put a list of things. Now, uh, it's usual to put um, a list of things that are all the same type, although you don't have to. So here I'm going to write days of the week. Let's have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and that's enough I think. So this this is like it's like a shopping list of well days in this case which is a bit weird but uh, each of these items is numbered starting at zero and the fact that th that things in an in an array are numbered starting at zero does tend to confuse beginners but um, you just have to sort of get used to it. So to actually access a, we, we call these things elements, we call the items in an array, elements of the array. And to actually access them, we, we do it like this. Let's write um, console.log and access an element of this array. So the first one would be, so the variable name and then square brackets and then a number like that. So we're, this is item zero in the array. So here we use square brackets uh, to actually initialize a variable. This is here we're using square brackets to actually create an array. And here, now that we've got the variable, we're using those same square brackets with a, just an integer inside to access elements of the array. And this is um, sometimes called dereferencing, dereferencing the array. So if we run this program, then let's run node arrays.js. We get Sunday, the first item in the array. We could also have, have, for example, set a variable equal to this. Let's try that with the second element at index one. So let's write let, uh, let day equal days one and then console.log day. So because we start numbering at zero, item number one in the array is Monday. So we've got zero, one, and two. Uh, and here we're just we're dereferencing the array, getting a value out of it, and um, getting an element from the array. And we're, we're using it to initialize this variable day and then outputting it. Let's try that. I'm just going to clear my console. And then we've got Monday. Let's, uh, let's have, well, what's that? Didn't want that there. Okay. Let's try um, the final element. So the final element is, of course, at index two. And that is Tuesday. You can, you can have arrays that are absolutely massive. So there we go, Tuesday. We've got three elements here, but, um, and you know, if, if you're 
having to initialize arrays by hand, sort of hard coding in literal values like this, then you're not going to have many values because it's going to get boring to type them. But you could, for example, initialize an array from values in a file or from values that you've create, created somehow. And arrays can then potentially have, you know, even millions, tens of millions or whatever entries in them. So you can put a lot of stuff in an array. Uh, we could have an array of numbers, for example. So let's write, um, let, uh, what should we call this? Uh, I don't really know. Heights equal, imagine this is, these are heights of a bunch of people. So we have the square brackets and then we have, um, how high are they going to be? 1.7, maybe meters, 1.65, 1.5. Five, 1.9. Um, and we can do the same thing with that, just, you know, like console.log. So, for example, um, this will be uh, at index 2 in the array. So that's index 0, 1, 2, 3. So let's output it, heights 2. JavaScript, um, unlike many more strict programming languages, doesn't always force you to put that semicolon at the end of a statement, but um, it is a good idea to put it in. Okay, let's try running this. And we get 1.5 down there. Um, we can mix things of different types in JavaScript arrays. So uh, let's maybe first, though, look at um, how we would iterate through an array. So one thing to say is that we can get the length of an array. So we can do that like this. Let's get the length of this heights array. Console.log heights.length. So we use the variable name of the array and then dot length. And that, that tells us how many items are in the array. So if you run this, we see there are four items. Let's, let's write here items in heights array I tend to revert to using um, double quotes because they're, they're probably more common in programming languages so I'm used to typing them but uh, I, I do sort of prefer single quotes for JavaScript personally I don't know I just think it looks nicer anyway let's let's try this so items in heights array 4 so we've got four items in the heights array but notice the last item would be at index 3, so one less than the length of the array. And that's because we start numbering at 0. Um, and this, this can be confusing. Sometimes we call it the off by 1 problem, um, or related problems. We call them the off by 1 problem. Uh, you have to remember that the last element of the array is at index length minus 1. So um, we can actually iterate through the whole array and output every item in it with a for loop. And if you've been following this course from the start and you're a relative beginner, I would recommend now trying to do that yourself. See if you can work out how to do it. Can you use a for loop to output every item in an array like this one? And I'm going to show you how to do it. So if you want to have a go at that, pause the video and try it. So let's write for um, I can use let i equal 0, i less than heights dot length, i plus plus. And then we can use i to access all the items in the array. So I can write console.log heights square brackets i. Um, let's maybe put some text here so that the output isn't too confusing. Item in heights array. I could even put item, let's write item i in heights array. Let's try that and see what it looks. So what we, what it looks like. So we get this, so this stuff here. And we've output successfully the entire array. Now, um, in JavaScript, 
uh, we can actually put things of different types in arrays. So I could write here, um, hello, like that. And if I now try, try to output that array, you know, it still works. But it has to be said that in general in programming, if you have an array like this, generally you're going to put things of the same type in it. And generally you're going to write code that treats uh, the elements in the array all in the same kind of a way. So you want, to, want them to be all the same kind of a thing. All right, we'll leave it there for this video. And um, the thing to do is always, uh, if you're confused by this, or even if you're not, if, if, you have, if you're not used to working with arrays and using for loops and things, you just, just practice this. Try it out for yourself. Try to get to the point where you can just write it out from memory. I don't think it's helpful to take notes. Um, I do think it's helpful to type this stuff out even multiple times until you can do it from memory. And don't forget, you can also find my GitHub repository at github.com slash cave of programming and then go to the um, go to the repository for this course uh, if you want to browse the source code online. Okay, we'll leave it there for now. Until next time, happy coding.